Uh, welcome to 24-7 Football. Um, a little bit of an isolation podcast type thing with Josh Askew, with Joe Mavir, professional footballer from Salford City. Josh, absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you for joining us today. No worries, mate. I know you've got a lot on at the moment. Uh, <laughs> take, <laughs> take time, taking time out of your day. You've gone for the isolation trim. I as have. Well. I have. It was needed. Uh, the haircut was a shock beforehand and... Uh, Every two weeks, I'm in the in the barbers getting an haircut, and I see you in there. So you do. I've had to uh, I've had to shave it off, go back to my old style. Ah, it looks all right, mate. It looks all right. Oh, uh, yeah. Gone for the classic footballer's trim. Um, so what we're going to be doing with Josh is just speaking from a professional footballer's point of view about how isolation, the COVID nineteen virus, is affecting football and also affecting everyone as well. But the most important thing is everyone who's watching this stays home. Stay safe and follow the guidelines. Absolutely, yeah. massively important. So, Josh, how are you actually finding isolation? Um, that's a good question, really. Uh, it's it's an interesting one. I mean, obviously, we all want to be back training. We all want to be playing. I mean, don't feel right today, Saturday. Do you know what I mean? Normally, yeah. you know, we're in the changing rooms getting ready for an hour before kickoff. So it's. Uh, it's an interesting feeling, really, because you still get the emotions and the, the, the built-up energy because um, it's ingrained in you. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It's, it's natural. So, it's yeah, you, you sort of feel like your arms fell off at some parts because <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Um, we've all been given programmes, so we're all training still as hard as we can at home. Uh, I know a lot of other clubs are doing a lot more specific work than others, but you know, they're doing as best as they can because this is unprecedented. Do you know what I mean? This has never yeah. happened before. So it's it's sort of take it as it is and see what you can do with it, really. It is strange times, isn't it? It is strange oh, of course times. It is. Of course it is. I mean, like I said, it, this has never happened before. So it, every club sort of going off what they reckon is the best way to work, you know, work with things. I mean, it, you know, I, I'm quite fortunate that my wages are paid through with Salford City. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with Gary Neville being a very big vocal point on um, clubs not using furlough pay, uh, you know, using the likes of Liverpool as an example of basically saying you should not be doing yeah. that. And then they reversed it, which is great. Um, but, you know, I'm quite I'm quite fortunate, really, with, with Salford where, wages wise. But I know I was part of a meeting with Curzon and Ashton uh, not long ago where it's you know clubs that work off um, lads that are training you know in the academies all the way up from ages what four four or five all the way up to they're eighteen yeah you now there's a there's a weekly income with that um, with Curzon and Ashton being a massive vocal point in Manchester the Greater Manchester area that's where they hold all the cup finals you know they use all the facilities throughout the, the you know the whole year really so it's a lot of money that's just all of a sudden not there you know what i mean it's mm. it's brutal really so uh yeah it's it's not it's not a great a great standpoint for clubs like that but hopefully you know that uh, by the sound of things the premier league are trying to uh help out the lower clubs by the mm. sound of things so but it, this is it no one really knows you know it's all hearsay until something gets done and that's it why like cuz we yeah know, we've just heard about um another three weeks of isolation we heard that Thursday do you know what I mean and then we just roll on then and that's it and it's it's just as it comes it seems to it's just one of those situations isn't it no one really knows what's going to happen because we don't no. we don't know what it is but apart from um we'll, we'll get on more to the football inside in a second but um you've been keeping really fit by the by the looks of your Instagram and yeah. Facebook and stuff yeah. like that so and you've actually been putting coaching tutorials out there as well haven't wow. you yeah. Um, have you actually enjoyed that side of it? Have you enjoyed oh, keeping completely. fit? Are you as fit as ever? Oh yeah, this is this is the fittest I've I've ever been in my career for, for definite. Um, sounds a bit ridiculous, really, but uh, COVID nineteen ended up being the, the the best thing for my fitness. It just in terms of <laughs> I, I feel like I've turned into a bit of a Forrest Gump type at the minute. I, I've not stopped running. Um, you haven't. You haven't. I, I managed to break past the barrier of um, two hundred and fifty kilometers. Then in in the space of three months, really. Um, so I sort of it, it shocked me. I didn't realise I'd run that far and run that much. But then I thought I'll just keep going and keep it up. Um, it sort of goes on to a more of a, a deeper point, which will will I'll only touch on a little bit. But I was in uh, not a very good place mentally 
yeah. uh, not long ago, dealing with uh, grief of losing my granddad. So I thought, how can I get myself out of this rut? You know, I didn't enjoy the usual things that I enjoy. I'm quite a positive person. I'd say I'm a very positive person. I, I wasn't myself. Uh, so I thought, well, what can I do? And I turned to running to go out, burn all the energy, get the endorphins, and sort of feel better. And gradually and gradually, it started to uh, started to work. And so now I'm trying to sort of motivate uh, as many of my friends and family as I can that whoever are in a negative place to, to use uh, fitness and running as a way of getting out and going, going, expressing yourself and becoming back to your usual self again. Yeah, I mean, you were really close to your granddad as well, weren't you, obviously? Which yeah. is, um, um, And do you think if you didn't take up running and then COVID-19 came back, you had that support structure of your football yeah. team taken right. away? You, yeah. You know, what, well, that, what, would, you, what, what would have mean. happened? That's what I mean. It's, 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 a, it's a big question of what would have happened, really. And I'd like to not really think about the yeah, other yeah. side of where it could have gone. Because uh, it was a sort of pinnacle point of my career, basically. You know, it, it came to a point of uh, sitting down and asking serious questions to myself. What, where do I see myself going? What, where do I want it to go? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm football through and through, so there was never a doubt in that. But then it was the case of, right, what do I need to do? And like I said, I just took up running. And it's been quite an interesting one, really, because I thought one day, uh, I, w- I was running for quite a bit, and I thought, I felt like I needed to voice my opinion just just to basically just sort of be a, a, a sort of I don't know it, it, it didn't I didn't really think about it too much I just thought I'm going to put my, my, my Instagram story mm. I'm going to talk about if you're in a bad place get yourself up go out go and do a run go and do a walk because it'll be the hardest thing you do at that moment and then soon enough it'll be the easiest thing that you can do and um, and I put my phone back down and I carried on running I got home and I had 15 notifications on Instagram and it was pe- people that are close mates to mine and people that I'd never even spoke to in my life saying that they're really grateful that I opened my mouth and spoke because there's a sort of negative stint on mental health and especially with blokes talking yeah exactly and, 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 and you know speaking out so they said what you said affected me in a way that I thought watching some bloke on the TV mm. Do you know what I mean? I think I think it sort of touched them a little bit easier because it was on an Instagram live or Instagram story, so to say, of someone who they, they see post regular, which was me. So it, you know, it was quite a, quite a nice touching feeling, really. And I thought, well, if I can help at least one person mm. out of whoever watches my story, then you know, I'm be- I, I'm going to feel better for that. So yeah, it was a win win. Yeah, so that reaction that you got, obviously that huge positive reaction, yeah. did it did it sort of open your eyes as to how many people are actually affected Completely. by mental health? Completely. Like people you wouldn't have even known. I, I, honest, honest to God, I mean, it's, you could say that about myself. People, my family knew. Exactly, you know, yeah. And close mates seen it, but people on the wider circles, they wouldn't have seen anything. They, they didn't understand because obviously they'd just seen me change and that was that. Because um, obviously blokes, we don't like to really talk. It's wrong really, but we just don't. We sort of go within ourselves and think we can deal with it ourselves. But the minute you start to open out and talk to people, you know, it's it, it's just, it really does make you feel just like that weight and that, that weight of the world on your shoulders has been lifted because that's how I was for a good couple of months really. Um but yeah, it really did shock me. I thought, I, I, I thought, I, I can't believe just me putting a video on my Insta story could affect so many, you know, people. And the, the regular I did it, the more and more responses I get. So then I thought, oh, okay, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go out, especially in, in the times that we're in. I'll do a coaching video to keep the people, especially the kids at home. Yeah. Using the using the the fact that I've got my coaching badges, I thought, well, I might as well give them something to do because I was also getting good response uh, good responses sorry from like the younger viewers basically saying that um, seeing that you're going out for a run makes me want to go out for a run and how what does it take to be a professional footballer and asking big questions really uh, so then my sort of like an audience so to speak it's crazy really it all came from all stemmed from just an insta story you, you, you don't realize how many people you can affect it's a circle isn't it you speaking out really exactly. it's just helped a lot of people exactly. that you wouldn't have thought um so going back towards football then um i'll speak about you as a professional first 
because I've seen you had a little bit to say about it on uh, social media anyway. So yeah. um, the media hounding professional footballers and Matt Hancock into giving them a response as yeah. to should professional footballers pay their way. Um, interesting to see that there's big uh, figures like Richard Branson and also MPs themselves refusing yeah. to take a pay cut. Yeah. Um, what, what was your standpoint on it that professional footballers were being made this sort of like scapegoat, if you will? Oh, completely. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, it wound me up. It got me annoyed. You know, it was one of them because I think without this whole situation, that what I touched on was uh, a point made by someone on Facebook saying that uh, an NHS worker earns £17,000 a year and a professional footballer earns £130,000 a week. And someone had captioned it as, surely this isn't right. Mm. And of course it's not. Do you know what I mean? Of course, in, in an ideal world, the NHS and the, the doctors and the nurses and anybody who works in sort of saving people's lives and caring for lives, surely they should be earning the mega, mega money. Of course they should. But the reality of the world, that's not the case. And so as a professional footballer, it, it hurts me because people all assume already you're in a bracket of you're you know you you should you you shouldn't be earning that money yeah um, so what are you going to do about it that's not that you can't really work like that and my point made there um from that facebook post was basically saying that the, the professional footballers that earn ridiculous amounts of money like that a week the majority of them and i mean a mass majority of them donate a lot of money to charity, donate a lot of money to, you know, to, to help whoever they can, especially in this time right now. Um, I mean, Marcus Rashford did a, did a load for the homeless and a lot oh, of... Oh, unbelievable work, you know yeah. what I mean? In Manchester, he, he raised a load of money, but that only got maybe a week's press. Then the rest yeah. of it was, you know, how, how shameful footballers are, why are they doing that on a night out? I mean, they probably still get taxed at 45% as well. Of well. course they do, do you know what I mean? And that's, but at the same time, you know, someone also said, who needs that amount of money? And of course, nobody, you know, needs that amount of money. But if I was to say to anybody in the bloody world, if I was to say to them, if you can earn uh, £250,000 a week, are you going to take it or are you not? Yeah, obviously. No one's ever going to go, no, give it to the NHS or no, give it yeah. to a doctor or a nurse you're just not gonna so it's it's sort of like um i mean don't get me wrong I, I, it's only because i'm in that football circle where it winds me up because of course i agree that nhs and and the workers and the doctors and the nurses should of course earn a lot more money but then that's that's down to the government that we vote in Absolutely, absolutely. You know I mean? um, does, is it a bit? Um, did you find it a bit hypocritical when Matt Hancock said he won't be taking a wage cut? Of course, of course um, he did. but then he's calling out footballers to do their bit. That was yeah. His, that was his uh, yeah. That his was his line. Do you know what I mean? And it, and it sort of makes you sit there and think, well, you know, we're all in this together at the end of the day. Because mm -hmm. I'm not being funny. The 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 thing about COVID nineteen is it's not prejudice, it's not racist, it's not ageist, it's nothing. It'll get anybody and it will kill anybody. It's the thing that's proven. So we're all in it together. Why don't we all do what we have to do to make sure that the money goes to NHS? I mean, still, we're talking now. How long has this been going on for? Maybe five weeks, you reckon, now? Uh, yeah, I've been in lockdown for about lockdown. five weeks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, doctors and nurses are still not getting the full... Is it PPE protection? Yeah, I think uh, yesterday they said that um, they're actually having to reuse equipment now because exactly. they haven't got it. Exactly. I mean, that's just absolutely disgusting. I mean, how can you say that after five weeks? But then we was also delayed in going into lockdown anyway, because which t personally I thought was ridiculous, this whole herding method that they said we could work with. Yeah. It, it was just down to kill more, more and more people. It was obvious from the, from the, the get-go in the beginning, but... You know, at the end of the day, that's that's what we do. So we're now delayed. Other countries will start to improve, and we're we're not yet. We're getting back. We're getting there, I reckon. Mm. But yeah, it, it really is frustrating because I, I I've got a um, a brother's girlfriend. She works a, uh, as a dental nurse, but she was on the the front line for quite a while. And the the, the stories that she said and what she's seen, it, it's it's really you know horrifying, really. And you sort of sit there and you think, how is that? 
allowed to happen in 2020. Doesn't make any sense, but that that's how that's how it works at the end of the day. Yeah, and footballers were made the scapegoat. Um, of course we were. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it was interesting to see that it was. I don't know whether you picked up the media. Um, who is actually run by you know the likes of Rupert Murdoch, Richard Branson. Yeah. I was sort of like trying to deflect it away from themselves, who of aren't of really course. really putting the money in. But um, yeah. going back to football, then a um, bit of an interesting one um, because it's, there's two there's loads of different ways that it's going. So non-league um, uh, bet victor has been cancelled. Um, no, um, National League North that's just been suspended indefinitely, but they're most likely not going to finish the season. Yeah. Um, would do you think they did that too early, and do you think the season, this foot, current football season, all levels should be voided, or do you think it has to be finished? Yeah, I mean it's it's one of them. Isn't it? I mean, personally, for me, yeah, they did get voided too early for me personally. I think they made that decision on 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 the case of certain aspects of it, but at the same time, they didn't think of the wider image or how it looked anyway. But then you've got to sit there and think, I think this is an argument that a lot of people don't sort of recognise, maybe that the, the typical football fan who wants football to be back and wants them to finish the season and all that argument. Lads are on contracts. Clubs don't have the money to pay these contracts. Absolutely. You know I mean? Or lads that aren't on contracts and are on pay, you know, pay-to-play sort of uh, deals they're under no, no no, strict rule to ever play for that club again. Mm. And the club can't expect them to because they're not getting paid to. Do you see what I mean? So there's a massive argument in terms of, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't make much sense really. And clubs are now going to find themselves in such a, a difficult period, especially to the lads that, what do they do? If, if, if a lad's contract's up in April, end of April or beginning of May, and this doesn't, doesn't come out of it until mid June and then the season goes all right well exactly you've lost your players you've lost eight or nine players possibly do you know what I mean and it, it real people don't recognize that because it's not really spoken about but there's there's a lot more in-depth detail about how these clubs are going to have to manage um so I think start from from the lower leagues I think that had to be done because you know the, the lads are going to sit there and think well I'm not being paid for this I need to work, or I'm going to be mm. furloughed, or whatever else. You're in a tough, a tougher situation, really. Um, but I, it's like a domino effect from the bottom up. Yeah. Because now the lower leagues are voided. Well, then, surely, from my own understanding, I know Conference North and Conference South vets to go into the conference, but it all has a knock-on effect of who goes up and who goes down, or from the Premier League all the way down to us. So, exactly, exactly. It's promotion, relegate. Relegation's exactly. a big one because you know with League Two going down, but obviously, how much have Barrow spent to exactly. go up? Which exactly, is... I know, and I know a few lads that are at Barrow at the minute, and I'm, I'm speaking to them before all this, and they were buzzing. You know, they could see themselves going up there, which was which was what we wanted, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then it, you look at it now, and it's like, how how is that? How, how are they going to work it? I don't, I don't understand it. Exactly. You've got really big teams like Self Shields as well. Well, I know. Pumped I know. They, 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 you know, pumped a lot of money to come up into Conference North and were hoping to, to carry on going up the leagues. Do you know what I mean? And But then you look at Bradford Park Avenue in our league. I mean, they, they this could be a lifeline to a club like that. It, exactly. It's a bit of disappointment and a massive loss for some clubs. And it's a lifeline for others. And it's There's always going to be winners and losers, isn't there? Exactly, exactly. Um, really interesting point is, uh, like you were mentioning with the contracts, FIFA have said that um, clubs can't legally force players to carry on with their contracts. You know, when we go into the higher divisions, you've got players like um, Giroud, David Silva. Yeah. Um, but you're out of contract this summer. I am. Um, and what, what does that actually mean for you? What guidance have you actually been given from the club perspective? Because you, you yeah. don't have to play on for Salford, you're effectively yeah. free agent, but there's no football going on. So no. how, how does that affect affect you, Josh? That was one of the really interesting points that was going to come out of this. No, of course, yeah. I mean, I'll go back to my point before. I'm quite fortunate to be under the club of Salford City. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's uh, Terry Neville and, and, uh, and Peter Lim have, have sorted everybody out in the club, basically, is in terms of uh, keeping us up to date with what's happening. Um, 
allowing us to 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 have all these different training sessions that we've got through the coaches. Um, it's it's a, it really is an interesting one. I'm just trying to think of what I can and can't say, though. That's yeah, of course, of course. No, no. Do you know what I mean? It's but at the same time, I, I'm very fortunate to be under a club with Salford as they've sort of give me a good backing of don't worry, we'll 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 help until the situation is resolved in terms of when we get back to the football um, again and everything goes back to normal, then we can work from there. So my understanding is that there's a buffer zone, so it's not going to be as cutthroat as a lot of other clubs are going to be, especially from sort of League 2 down below. Mm. So if well, your contract's up in June, that's it. So if we don't start till back till July, you're not our player in July. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, and then you look at clubs that also pay. They don't pay the full year; they'll pay. I think it's four to two weeks a year. Um, you, you've got to look at where their contract ends, and 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 think of well, you know, you'd hope to God they've been saving money behind them because they're going to need it. Because not, and then you know, I've had a, I've had a lot of discussions with my dad as well, really. And in terms of another club, um, when you when you sit there and think about it. Clubs that might have had a budget of, you know, sixty thousand to spend on three big players, they haven't got that budget no more. Mm. You see what I mean? So in terms of myself, if I become a free agent in the summer, and this is it now, everything's been put with an if because everything's all it's like a big cloud over everything at the minute. Absolutely, yeah. And that's probably the best thing going back to to me running really because it's just there's not it's not worth stressing or worrying about it. What what will happen will happen. You know, um, we'll just have to go from there when everything takes back off again. But yeah, it's it's it really is a, a very questionable time for a lot of other clubs that won't have the support that Salford can provide. Yeah, Abs- absolutely. Do you feel um, a little bit proud to represent Salford at the moment? You see, you see Gary Neville. Oh yeah. Uh, everything that he's done with his yeah. hotels yeah. for NHS frontline workers. I mean, it must be absolutely brilliant to be a part of it. Of course it is. I mean, you look at even down to the um, to the committee uh, going to hospitals and handing out uh, lunch bags and Easter eggs and all that sort of stuff. Loads of water for the, for the NHS staff. It's it really is. I'm very fortunate to be under such a well-run club, but at the same time, a club that cares for the community and cares for the overall safety of others. Really, and it, it is mm. nice. It, I think. A lot of, of course, most clubs are doing as much as they can. You know, even even Kers and Ashton are doing just as much as they can. And I know they opened up the, um, I think it's the club cafe for the homeless. Do you know what I mean? It's stuff like that that sort of goes not uh, noticed about around Tameside and Greater Manchester, but not in the N- the NEM. Do you know what I mean? It, Absolutely, yeah. It, it it sort of just stays within itself, and it should really get as much publicity as possible because it. You know, relating back to how the media portray footballers and football in general, it is a lot of it's very negative. As much as it's positive, a lot of it's very negative. And right now, there's a, there's a load of clubs, there's a load of players, um, managers, coaching staff, working staff, club staff. They're all doing that what they can mm. to, to help get everybody through the situation. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what job you're in. We're all in the same boat. We're all not working. We're all doing what we can. Staying at home, protecting the NHS and saving lives. Um, we've just got to get through it together and hope that we come out of this uh, ten times better. Really. Absolutely. How weird is it going to be for you when you do get back to football, and in most likely not going to be any fans? <laughs> that, that's yeah. going to be a strange one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've seen that. Yeah. I mean, personally for me, in terms of training with a football. You know, you can do a load of running, you can do a lot of working out, but if you're not with that football every day on a training pitch with, you know, 18 players and a coach, mm. you know, every every football team is going to have to have a, a mini pre-season. Exactly. What standard are we going to see? Because they, they're really trying to rush it through. So what are. standard are we actually going to see? And uh, I, I read a stat uh, through the, uh, the head physio at Salford City, put it in the WhatsApp group basically just uh, saying that in the NFL um, they've had a they had a, a period like this before where they had to halt all the all the games 
for a certain amount of time. And then when they came back, they rushed it to finish it off so they could start the next season. And the injury percentage rate went up 250%. And that's that's scary. You know what I mean? That's, mm. In other words, it, that a lot of injuries are going to happen when we come back to this if we're not looked after and if we're not in the right physical state to go and play again. Because you think we're... We're doing as much as we can at home. That's that's not what it's like when you're on a training pitch and you're working hard with the footballs out constantly. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. And obviously with no fans as well, for the for the safety of them to finish off the season, I, I can't... Why well, would fan, Especially go, maybe with City, you can you can go with, well, there'll be season tickets, there'll be... Yeah. You know, there's a load of fans. There's a, you can see that come the next season, they're going to have, you know... 45,000 going watching every week again. But to the lower league teams, clubs, why why would their fans return? If if they've been told you're not allowed to turn up to watch your team play for the, for the last five weeks of the season, come that next season, are they going to go, right, let's go and go watch them again? I'd like to think so, but there will also be that percentage that will go, well, I, I've lost interest now. Yeah, there'll there'll always be that, won't there? There'll always be that. I think the core football fans. I mean, I'm buzzing to get back, man. I can't wait. Oh yeah, no, that's what I mean. Of course, the the core will be buzzing. The core will be, you know, I've spoken to a lot of Salford fans, Curzon fans, and they're all scratching at the walls, just like the players are, to get back onto the pitch and go and watch us. And whilst we play, so you know, you'll always have that. But at the same time, it's it's going to be uh, interesting for the the club revenue, really, and the, the. The season tickets. Oh yeah, L- lower league, lower league teams. Can they play without fans? Well, you that's know, what I mean. That's a huge chunk of revenue gone. You know, you know, Probably. City and Liverpool's main revenue is TV deal, they're isn't it? Covered exactly. But the, the lower league top, you know, clubs, they 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 them sort of budgets and that they, they, they they'll want to have for the players in the summer. If they're not getting the season tickets in, they don't have that budget to go and buy that that player that they're looking for. That Josh so, asked you that they want. <laughs> well, exactly, a free agent in the summer, so I've got to try and sell myself on it, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, mate. You can play for my five side team if you want. Happily, mate. I'll do anything at the minute, I'm telling you. <laughs> do miss a bit of five side. Oh. Um, there's a little bit of that when you talk about uh, footballers and the media. There's a bit of um, there's a bit of a fit. Like you can see, people don't. Do you think people? don't really take into account footballers are humans as well. So we're talking about rushing back into football. Yeah. Do footballers want to be separated from their families for four weeks to do a World Cup style quarantined um, end yeah. season when yeah. there's, a, there's a pandemic going on? And do you think yeah. welfare of footballers is really being considered? Well, I mean, I had a good discussion with my dad the other, the other day actually about this. And, you know, you sort of class it as the players' union, you know, because... Mm. We, we are, like you said, we, we're, we're we're human beings. We can also get the virus. You've seen with the Chelsea lot, and uh, you know Arsenal, Arteta getting it, Pep Guardiola's exactly. mum passing from it. Do you know what I mean? It's awful. It's affecting us all. But we are we are just human beings at the end of the day. We 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 we've got our families. We've got you know lads have got kids. They've got the missus. They've got you know, priorities of their own, like you said, are they prepared to lose and leave that to then potentially get this this virus and go back to their own families? That's the scary thing. Do you know what I mean? And I know there was a few clubs that were trying to go back to training a bit earlier and I think Mourinho was caught with, with a few top... Yeah, he was caught in the heart, wasn't he? Of course he was. Stuff, stuff like that, I can, I can, in a handful group, you know, of, of four or five people, I can sort of have a bit of leniency to it. But if we go back to training and none of this, we don't have a vaccine for this, you know, COVID-19, then we're going to be, uh, we're going to be in a position of, of uncertainty. And I, 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 I wouldn't like to put my family in that, put it that way. But Yeah. Well, you need serious assurances before you go back. Exactly. Exactly. But then at the same time, the argument there is, <laughs> we're, especially the lads that are on contract, we're instructed to do, what we have to do, yeah. What what sort of voice do we have? And then that's the big question, really. That's when it'd have to take the whole group of players to go. We're putting our foot down. We're not doing this until this happens, mm. or until we're assured that we're not going to have, you know, we're not going to get symptoms of this in two weeks' time or a week's time. Uh, so yeah, it's all up in the air, mate. I, I really don't know. Of course, I'd love football to be back as soon as possible, but 
it has to be safe for the players, the fans, and the staff. Absolutely, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it is it is a strange one, and obviously when you're talking about empty stadiums, you've still got to have people in the stadium, haven't you? So until they all get tested, it's really really is up in here. It's going to be such a complex operation as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot deeper than what um, it looks from from afar, doesn't it? Really, when you when you think about it. Oh, un- unbelievably complicated. Um, so when you when you talk about you know the the top level of English yeah. football, you're a City fan. Um, Liverpool surely have, they've got I, it kills me. They've, <laughs> they've got they've won the league, haven't they? Of course they have. Of course they have. I mean, it's it's completely unfair, isn't it? Really, but you know, as as a, as a boy myself. Um, I don't know, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's, it's one of them. I, I kind of hope that they get given it now and we don't finish the season. Just so it just so, <laughs> takes away a little bit of how successful they've been this season. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. You know, you can say, well, you only got given it, didn't you? I mean, it's not the case. They won it. They've won it fair and square. But I was, I was excited to see how we'd do in the Champions League this season. You know, well, yeah, that was our that was our main focus. Not to say we'd have gone on and won it, because I know what City are like. Ah, we would have, we would have. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're, they're even scheduling the Champions League final for August 29th. Oh, no. So if you think of the City squad, they've got to get back into a four week end of Premier League like yeah. uh, campaign, and then yeah. they go straight into the Champions exactly. League. And yeah. then if the season starts in September, they've got no break. It's no. crazy to think about. No, I mean. I um I I I heard that players would get a two week uh period of, of nothing. Um like they were gonna do with that winter break, you yeah. know, after two weeks of, of a holiday type. Um it was a fre- for a friends and family holiday, basically. Two weeks, every player in, in all the teams, uh, to then come back and start pre season for next season. Which I mean, Crazy. normally players get, I don't mean, five five weeks is normally the average. You sometimes get more if you're not in a promotion, t- you know, t- title race or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, minimum four or three even maybe, but for two weeks, that's you know, you've got to think we've played a lot of football already, a lot of clubs. You're going to give us two weeks and then we're going to go in, in, in a full season again. I that's mean, a huge mental toll as well. Of course it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we uh, you know we, we don't re- well we, we don't have holidays footballers. We don't. We have our holiday is the six. It's like going back to school. Our holiday is <laughs> six weeks in the summer. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You know, and that that's what that's our structure. You play all the way through December. You don't. You play Boxing Day. You play New Year's Day. You go all the way through up until you know end of April, beginning of May, and then that's your holiday then. Um, so it's. I don't know. It's going to be interesting, mate. If I'm honest, I mean, this is the 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 first year in six years I've not gone on holiday in in the summer. Do you know what I mean? Because that's that's what we've we've been structured to do. That's the way we mm. have to work it. So I'm quite lucky I didn't book anything. If I'm honest, absolutely, you know absolutely. I mean? uh, Josh, just one final one. Um, I know you can't really go into too much detail, but even with the whole COVID nineteen thing, yeah, um, the pandemic. Does football and negotiations actually stop, or are you still actively in discussions about your future? Not just you, every footballer. Yeah, well, does it does I it mean, stop? Or well, I mean, it's one of them. Negotiations. Surely you'll be a bit more attractive to clubs because you don't have to pay a fee for you. So well, I mean, that's that's what you, you I'm hoping for personally, and so's my agent, Big Gaz Seddon. But ah, um, oh, Gaz, I yeah, miss Gaz. I know, I know. You need to get him back on. You need to get him back on. I do, I do. I'll give him a text. No, definitely. But uh, no, in, in terms of negotiations, it's as, it's as casual as a conversation sometimes. You know, it's yeah. not all suited and booted, let's go meet for a coffee somewhere and we can discuss terms. It can be as easy as a phone call, a text. So, but you know, a, a club's still active? Are they, oh, are they still... Of course, clubs are always going to be active. Clubs are active from, you know, the start of the season. Even though the transfer windows or whatever is short, I know in non-league they're not, but you know in, in league clubs, everyone's always looking for bigger and better, aren't they? They're always looking to improve in areas, and you might pick up a bad injury somewhere at centre mid or at left back as a club. You need right, how are we going to fill that? You know, so 
Um, no, negotiations haven't stopped. However, it's become a lot more murky and clouded because clubs don't know where they're going. Yeah, to exactly. Do you know what I mean? Because you think that that transfer budget to some clubs is now being used to pay staff and to pay play, players and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it is all up in the air. Um, clubs are sort of, I think, everyone's in that same boat. Let's wait and see where we end up after we get told whether our season's avoided or not, or who goes up, who goes down, um, and then go from there, really. So, yeah, there's there's, com- there's conversation. I wouldn't say it's much as a negotiation just yet. Well, I think that just about sums it up, Josh. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate you taking time out your Saturday to come and speak to oh, us. Oh, don't be daft, mate. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure, mate. Yeah, absolute pleasure on our end as well. So thank you for joining us today, Josh. I hope you've all enjoyed this little like podcast type thing with Josh. Well, oh, I don't forget when the last time we have him on. Uh, no. We'll see when he's in, when he's in Premier League next season. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll speak to him then. But um, thank you to everyone who's watched. Please, everyone, stay safe. Uh, stay home. Follow the guidelines. Um, and together, like Josh said, we'll all beat this. Um, so subscribe to the channel, like the video, check out our website 247football.com and we'll see you next time.